It's live on KEXP. I'm your host, Eva Walker, from listener-powered 90.3 FM here in Seattle and streaming worldwide 24-7 on KEXP.org and on the mobile app. And KEXP is a nonprofit, and these live performances are made possible by donations by people like you. Uh, we are in the live studio room with one of my favorite local bands, High Pulp, and they're going to play... Four songs, and then we're going to talk. Does that sound good? Awesome. <laughs>
Live on KEXP, I'm Eva Walker in the studio with the fantastic high pulp. You guys, that was freaking awesome. Thank you. Jesus, I wasn't ready. Uh, so let me just introduce the members of high pulp. We have Andrew, a.k.a. Giant Steps on the alto <laughs> sax. That is in regards to your solo, the second song. Um, and we have Antoine over on Synthesizer and Bobby on the drums, and uh, Kaylee on bass, uh, Rob on the keys, and Trevor on guitar, and Victory on tenor sax and flute. So there's seven of you guys in here. <gasps> okay, how do you make that work? <laughs> That's the first question. <laughs> we just show up, you know? We <laughs> figure we don't have a plan other than just showing up and trying, you know? Um, yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess, is there a main songwriter? How are these songs coming together? Does it start with jams? Is it? Yeah, no, we write, we write like as a group for sure. And there's different, you know, different sections or different parts of the songs or whatever will be more or less led by somebody else. But um, yeah, we don't really try to have any like specific, like prescriptive way of writing. You know, sometimes we write in a group. Sometimes we write something at a sound check and sometimes we hear a random thing while we're on a walk and we take a voice memo of it and try to figure it out. And with this, with uh, the new record that we just put out in, in April, we did that whole thing during COVID. So we recorded that all from our own homes. We weren't even together and we'd record like a, a drum beat and put it in a Dropbox and then somebody else would pull it out of the Dropbox and put their thing over it and then put it back in the Dropbox and somebody else would put the bass on it and whatever. So that was a cool way to record because it was like a bird's eye view as opposed to like, you know, when, uh, when you're writing in the room together, you're sort of limited by your abilities. So on this new record, we were able to like maybe bite off even more than we could chew at the time, you know, and just like learn the thing and, and hear an idea that we wanted and, and figure out how to do it. Um, it felt a lot more like we were sort of like a beat maker, you know what I mean? As opposed to like a band. It was like, we were just one, like, like a beat maker with like seven limbs, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Wow. And uh, you guys have been together a while. I think the first time, so I've met, I know some of you from years ago. I think I met Victory and Rob at Mojam, I think is where we met. And Bobby, I think I met you at the Royal, Royal Room. Room. Yeah, or Hummingbird, yeah. Yeah, and Hummingbird. Um, and... I think the first time I saw you guys play as High Pulp was at the Royal Room, mm -hmm. I, I believe. Um, and that was years ago. How have you guys changed or grown or It's changed a then? ton. And like we had like, we've been a band for like five years or something like that. And, but we've always sort of had like a rotating cast of musicians. And it sort of feels like just now, we just finished like 30, 32 shows. We were just on the road for like six, eight weeks. And, um, I don't know. This time, I feel like everybody's been saying, like, it feels like this is now, like, the first time we're, like, a band. You know what I mean? Because when you have so many rotating pieces and, you know, I, I don't know, like, everybody's changing and growing over the course of the years. It's, like, didn't always feel like it coalesced until, like, you know, this new album and this this band, this rendition of, of the group, you know? So... But it's, I don't know, we try to just embrace that change, you know what I mean? We don't want our stuff to sound the same, you know? And, and that's sort of the exciting thing is like, yeah, we want to change, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys have a range of, of sound. Uh, the first song, I think it was the first song, um, and I hope you take this as a compliment. Mm. I probably need to stop doing this with bands, but I'm just going to hope you take this as a compliment. It reminded me of, there was this tape my, my mom used to listen to by this band called the Rippingtons, I think that's what they were called. And basically the tape had like this scary looking cat on it on all of the, the records and this cat used to scare the crap out of me. It um, reminds you of the cat? It reminds me of the Rippingtons. Great. I think that's what they were called. Um, that's amazing. Some of your, some of your sounds. So yeah. with that uh, being said, what are some of the biggest influences it's um, for you guys? So much, so much different stuff. Obviously, there's like a lot of jazz influence, and we love like Duke Ellington and Miles Davis, and you know, Pharaoh Sanders and Wayne Shorter, and a bunch. You know, list goes on. Um, then there's also just like a ton of hip hop influence. Like, we love Shabazz Palaces. We love uh, Vince Staples. We love 
you know, um, a whole a whole grip of different stuff. And then we love experimental music and ambient music, and we love the Rolling Stones, we love the Beatles, you yeah. know, like, and we don't even really think about, you know, we love My Bloody Valentine, the Cockatoo Twins. We don't really think about the stuff as far as, like, genres. We think about it just sort of as, like, who's doing it that, that gets it done for us, you know what I mean? Who actually, like, moves us and... We find that that's just literally in every different genre. So the thing that like ties it all together is not the style of the music, but the, the like emotion of the music, and that's what we're trying to tap into. I think with our stuff that doesn't really isn't really a genre. You know what I mean? We yeah. Don't, it's hard to find bands that play on bills with us. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh, well. But we love that. We like play with punk bands, play with hip hop bands, play with you know. That's great. You don't need to be limited to yeah. you know. Like you said, one kind of genre. Yeah, I mean, that's no, great. It's, it's it's silly. You know, that's a silly thing to do. Yeah, it totally is. And um, Bobby, you specifically, how long have you been playing drums? And can you tell us about the moment you went to the crossroad to be able to be that good at drums? <laughs> I don't know why you say that. <laughs> very very uh, very kind of you, but I just you know I don't know. There's so much work to you know what I mean. It's like a it's a life it's a life uh, pursuit. Um, yeah, I've been playing since I was like 13, so I'm, I'm 29, so 16 years, yeah. But we all inspire each other, like we all just love to practice, you know, we all love to just play our instruments, so, and a lot of us live together and have lived together over the years or whatever, so you just hear somebody practicing, you're like, I'm gonna go practice, you know what I mean? And somebody hears you practicing and they go practice, so you just create like a, a nice little like ecosystem, you know what I mean, where everybody's uh, like lifting each other up, you know? Yeah, that's amazing. And you just mentioned the 36 shows you guys all did. I think it was right? 32. 32 yeah. shows. Yeah. And your last stop was in New Orleans. My family's from New Orleans. Oh, really? I was born in Seattle, but my family's from New Orleans. And yeah, when you think of, I mean, my first time there, there was horns in the street and yeah. the music. I was like, what is this place? Uh, what was that like for you guys to be playing the kind of music you play yeah. in a place like New Orleans? It was special. It was like, like I was talking about this with, uh, with Andy. Like that, that felt like a pilgrimage. You know, I've never been there. Some of us had never, like, I think, like, five of us had never been there, five of the seven of us. So, you know, um, yeah, it was, it was incredibly special. And the, the music, not just the jazz that comes from that town, but, like, you know, a whole bunch of different stuff. The Frank Ocean, the Lil Wayne, like, you know, we, like, so much stuff from New Orleans has, like, really influenced us. And it was cool to be there. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was like, it was, it was humbling, you know, you're sort of on like sacred ground, you know, and you can feel that. It doesn't feel like out here, you know, it's a different place. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> yes, it is. I want to add to that, but I don't know if I should. Yeah, yeah do. You're Dude, totally I'm right. I'm curious. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it's just, it's different, mm -hmm. you know. I love Seattle. I do. I was born and raised here. It's home. Um, but um, my family being from New Orleans, they brought all of that. With them. So, yeah, they brought all right. that with them. So I had a very Southern upbringing. Yeah. Um, so going to New, New Orleans, I was like, I feel like I'm at home, mm -hmm. but I've never been here before. It feels so familiar. It's a beautiful city, too. It's like a jungle. It's like so much green. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I was like, you know, we're so far away from everything up here, you know, and it's cool because of that. But also it's like, I don't know, we hadn't been to a lot of these cities because... Seattle's so isolated, you know? Yeah, so. and I didn't realize until I was outside of my grandma's house in Seattle that no one else cooked like her. I was like, oh, oh I have to go to New Orleans <laughs> to get this. Yeah, the whole food That's in the South bad. is a whole different thing. <laughs> we, If we could only eat barbecue all day, we would. <laughs> Andy refuses to eat anything other than barbecue now. It sounds like broke him, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much. Do you, do, there's seven of you in here. Do you, any of you all want to add anything or talk? You're totally welcome to. <laughs> Is there anything you want to shout out and Too say? Quiet, folks. <laughs> if anyone gets a chance, go to Dreamland Barbecue. Oh, Dreamland Barbecue in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, big shout out. That's an amazing, that was the best food we had on the whole tour. Nice. Shout out Joe's record store. Oh, yeah, Joe's record store. Joe, uh, the drummer, we were touring with Jared Matson from the Matson 2. And, uh, amazing band check them out and joe the drummer amazing drummer uh also owns a record store in new orleans called no pulp which is crazy because we <laughs> didn't know him at all serendipity but yeah i think the shout out go check out the record we just put out it uh april 15th on anti and uh that's right let yeah. me ask you about that yeah you guys are on i i've been calling it anti but there's an anti 
Um, congratulations. Eva, Ava, you know, you're <laughs> like, it's not, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did that come about? That's amazing. Congratulations on that. You Thank guys. you. Yeah. Um, we, our manager, just, you know, people know people and somebody got the record to them and they liked it and they took a risk on us or whatever. Cause you know, we weren't that, that big or whatever, but now now that we've had their, uh, they've been so so helpful to work with and so wonderful to work with. And we noticed on these shows out there when we were playing in, you know, Cincinnati or Iowa or some place that we'd never played before and people were showing up. We we're like, how'd you hear about this stuff? You know, and they're like, oh, you know, anti or whatever, Spotify or whatever. So we never had that reach before. And it's been really cool to be able to connect with people in different parts of the country and the world that we wouldn't have been able to, you know, connect with otherwise. So... Yeah, it's been humbling. Anti's been amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And I wouldn't call it a risk as much as I would call it common sense. You guys are incredible. So. God bless. <laughs> uh, pretty amazing. So this record, Pursuit of Ends, is out now on Anti. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming on live on KEXP and performing. Uh, Andrew, Antoine, Bobby, Kaylee, Bob, Trevor, and Victory, thank you so much. Appreciate and, you. Of course, to our video team, Jim, Scott, Alia, Carlos, and uh, engineer Julian and Jake on photos, and Miles uh, here for hospitality. Uh, this is live on KEXP. I'm Eva Walker. Thank you to our viewers and listeners for supporting KEXP. And uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that's where you can get hip to all these amazing live sessions that happen. And uh, please consider donating to KEXP because that's how you can power our station and power these amazing live in studios like this one right here. And you can do that by visiting kexp.org slash live. Bye! <laughs> Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.